Go love your own enemies. Don't be loving mine. My enemies are the theocratic fascists. I, I don't love them. I want to destroy them. child made in the image of God. Oh no, you're not. You're a faggot. And you can't join your church and you can't go to heaven. This is disgraceful. It's inhuman. Okay, this is a short video and I am going to be reading, but I'm going to be reading something that I wrote. So hopefully I'll be able to pronounce all the words. <laughs> that noise you hear in the background, that's pity pets. In case you've been wondering what that is, remember the mice that I haven't killed because I took pity on them? Well, they have to have a house and they have to have a wheel to run on, so that's what that noise is. Anyway, this happened under Facebook this morning. I don't even know if, um, let me see if I can. Somebody wrote me something on Facebook this morning and I wanted to read some of the comments about it. A friend of mine who I don't really know, she's, she's a friend, a virtual friend, writes me, I don't want to lose you as a friend. Rarely do I end friendships. The only post recently that wasn't about religion was about a canary and even that tied to religion. It isn't about religion. It's about your obsession. It is hard to see anyone post nothing but one topic. Do you ever laugh at yourself? Do you ever see a child playing? I never see happiness from you. I laugh at me setting the stove on fire and at me looking for, <clears throat> and at me look God <clears throat> and at me looking for keys that are in my pocket. Hugs, not giving up. Okay. So I had a few knee jerk reactions that I wrote back to her. I will read them first. <clears throat> I have a lot of things I write about on my page. And then I mentioned somebody's name who recently stirred the shit on Facebook that has caused me to post a little bit more than usual. So I write, and so yes, for a while I will be posting again about the misconceptions people have about atheism. Because the misconceptions are glaring and they presume to judge a whole group of people, including myself. She writes, I judge not on religion, but on the person counts Count and see, you used to talk about pets, are they gone? I write her, if you never see happiness from me, you aren't looking very hard. I posted about getting new lenses for my glasses. I post about my driving. I post about the me mediation I went through. I post about job hunting. I post about my animals. I am an activist against the poison spread by a belief system that almost destroyed my life that is part of my identity. If you don't like it or want to perceive that part of my it, or want to perceive that part of my identity that I am proud of the fact I seek to help people like I wasn't help as negative or an obsession, well gee, not giving up, are you waiting around for me to become someone else? <sighs> Also, not so cool posting a comment like this publicly. You should have PM'd me. That would have been a little less humiliating. And then she writes, Nope, I don't count anyone's posts. So then I write, I am not changing who I am one bit. I am an activist. If I can do something meaningful with the rest of my life, I will. This is my page, and if I want to promote freedom from religion on it, on my page, I will. Sorry you don't approve. Yes, I still have my animals, but they are not my whole life. I stand for the things I believe in, and that has a lot more day-to-day -day impact on my life and a lot more to do with who I am. My animals are my friends. They are not me. Okay, so that leads me, that leads me to what I wrote. I felt kind of creative, so I wanted to write something that kind of goes along with this subject and this is what I want to post or this is what I want to share <clears throat> in this video. Okay, so what I wrote, trying to be poetic. A few things regarding what seems to some of you like an obsession. 
I have pertaining to atheism. Try to imagine, <clears throat> try to imagine I don't have a frog in my throat. Okay, <clears throat> sorry, I'll try this again. A few things regarding what seems to some of you like an obsession I have pertaining to atheism. Try to imagine this. You have purple skin. Everyone in your neighborhood, everyone in your city, believes that people with purple skin are inherently evil. They are not trustworthy. They are incapable of even knowing what right and wrong is. What's more, they don't, that is everyone else, want people with purple skin to exist. They tell you that you have a choice, that you choose to have purple skin. They tell you that you don't really have purple skin. You just think that you do, but really you're just like them, only you're in denial. They treat you like you are them, assume you are the same as them, speak to you and say things to you like you're the same. And if you remind them that you're not and this offends you, they tell you again that people like you don't really exist, you just think you do. Or worse, they tell you to just leave the country because it's their country, not yours. So you have a choice. You can either go along with it and pretend, like they do, that you are just like them, ignoring the fact that every day, in some way, you have to try not to be offended by all the assumptions people make that you're someone else, not you. Or, you can stand up for yourself and try to change how people think, and help them understand that purple-skinned people are not the same but that doesn't make them untrustworthy or inherently evil either. And because they are not untrustworthy or wicked, they, and who they are, deserves to be accepted and respected and treated with the same consideration as everyone else. Except, just declaring this once doesn't do the trick. You continue to, every time you turn around, run into the same offensive assumptions that what you are is lost or blind or inherently evil, and so you need to be changed or persuaded to change, or what you are just needs to be ignored or pretended away, pretended that you are someone else and just like they are, not you. So the fight goes on, because changing people's minds is a lot of work especially when you are up against the majority's opinion, and especially when that majority opinion is wrong. This is rather what it's like to be an atheist in America. It's the same as someone who is disabled, trying to have buildings that allow him or her wheelchair access. You don't get to put it aside and say, okay, I'm done now caring how people treat me. Because every day is a reminder that you are not the same, but you should be. They want you to be. Every day there is that desire to say, Hey, look, I am here, and I have value. This is my country, too. And how I think, feel, and believe, and how I am treated should matter, too. So that's what I posted on Facebook. I just feel like... Why can't people just, you know, it's frustrating. I shouldn't have to be on the defensive all the time, and that's how I feel. What what started all this was I was I had a little canary that was attacked by one of my cats yesterday. Or no, it was Monday. And I had to take the little bird to the vet because it had an open wound, and I was thinking, you know, with the, with the canary, or any bird, if it gets attacked by a cat, if it doesn't get antibiotics within like 24 hours, it's going to die. So I took the little bird to the vet hoping to save its life. And, you know, the vet came, came up to me and she had some treatment plans. One of them cost 700 and some dollars. The least expensive of them cost like $190. And I, I, let her know that this is too much money for me to spend. So she says, well, we could we could just do this and pray. I ignored it. I didn't make a fuss about the fact that she assumed that I just believe the same thing she does. I just didn't say a word about it. In the end, the bird was euthanized because I could not afford to treat the bird. 
and bringing it home again to die naturally would have been it would have meant it would have suffered so I had it humanely euthanized but it left a bad taste in my mouth that she just assumed that I was the same as she that I believed the same thing oh you just have to pray you know it kind of sounded ridiculous that she, when she said it to me it just sounded ridiculous to me that that would even come out of her mouth that she would just assume that I was going to believe in that, 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 that praying to some imaginary being. You know, and that's just the way it is every single day. You never, as an atheist, you just never know. When next you turn around and someone is going to make some stupid assumption that you believe this stuff, that you're just like they are. And if, you know, you, have, you can say something and then they're going to brand you as rude or they're going to look at you like you're you know, suddenly you're going to change right in front of their eyes and become um, evil because you're evil, you're an atheist and everyone knows atheists are evil, right? I mean, I have seen that so many times where I have made it clear that, I, you know, I don't really believe in that, I'm an atheist. You can see it on their faces, how they, their faces, their expressions change. And it's offensive. The assumption that you're not as good, the assumption that you're lost, the assumption that you're evil, or that you have no conscience, or that you are incapable of knowing what right and wrong is. All these things that people assume, and you can see it on their face the moment you tell them you don't believe in Jesus, or you don't believe in God. Every day, in the most mundane situation that you can possibly imagine, like taking a little bird to the vet. You can have this thrown up in your face every day. It's a day-to-day, -day, part of life kind of thing that atheists have to face in this country. And Christians don't understand why atheists are angry. Christians don't understand why it's a big deal. They're the majority. They don't have to deal with it. They don't understand why... Atheists get a little tired around Christmas time having Christian songs blaring on the radio everywhere they go and Christian symbols in lighted up and flashing all over the place and people assuming, assuming, assuming that Jesus is the reason for the season and you agree with this, right? Anyway, it just gets old, that's all. It gets old. It would be nice. You know, if Christians would just stop and think what it would be like to not be a Christian in this country. Just think for a minute what that would feel like. You know? Try to imagine. A lot of people have an imagination. All they need to do is use it. As, in a, as, a, as a wannabe writer or somebody who has written books, I've had to imagine how it feels to be the antagonist side of, you know, I, I write the, the good guys, but then I also have to write scenes depicting the, the bad guys in the story, and I have to imagine what their perspective is to them, and how it feels to be them, and how the world looks like to them. Not saying that, e that the atheists are bad guys, or that Christians are good guys either. I'm just saying it doesn't take that much work to imagine what the other side feels like, or how it would be to be you know, how would it feel if someone came up to you and said, oh, according to this book, you, you believe just the way I do. You, you think you're a Christian, but you're really not. You're, you're a Muslim. Because it says so right in this book that people think, might think that they believe something else, but they really do believe in Islam. How would you like it if people assumed that just because you're a Christian, you're evil? Just because you're a Christian, you're lost and deluded. Well, atheists do think that about Christians. But my point is, how would you like it if there was a majority that were, that were saying the same things about Christianity? How would you like it if no Christian could run for office because people assumed that you have no morals or people assumed that you're not trustworthy? So no Christian could run for office. You had to hide the fact that you're a Christian from everybody because the moment they find out you're a Christian, they're going to look at you like you're evil. How would you like it if that was happening to you on a daily basis? That's what it's like to be an atheist. Imagine the tables were, if the tables were turned 
and people were treating you like you treat atheists. Imagine that. Would you like it very much? After a while, would you get a little bit tired of it? Anyway, I want to end this because this is supposed to be a short video. I just wanted to put up something about, I just wish people would have a little more consideration for the other guy. You know, Christians feel attacked. Well, thank you very much, try being an atheist for just one day. If you are feeling attacked, you're being attacked by the minority group. Try being the minority group, the minority group being attacked by the majority. There's so much more of you doing the attacking. Try being that for a day. So, okay, that's it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye. I am uh, absolutely convinced that the main source of hatred in the world is religion. And I think it should be religion treated with ridicule and hatred and contempt. Let's get together Home is ready.